Hey everyone, it's Alby. Welcome back to my channel. I have been wanting to start sort of a new sub series on my channel and that has been sort of a canonical or at least to me canonical um, romantic comedy movie series. So if you don't know if something is canon, it is considered like some of the best of the best. So for example, uh, take like uh, feminist literature, Jane Eyre, will always be considered canonical, etc. So if I was to start the series, one movie that I really think did the romantic comedy so well is My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And I just recently rewatched it and this movie is over 20 years old and it is still, still wonderful. So I'll give you a brief synopsis of the story. Sorry, I hit my camera. Okay, so it says, a young Greek woman falls in love with a non-Greek and struggles to get her family to accept him while she comes to terms with her heritage and cultural identity. So this movie stars Nina Vardalis, who also was the writer of the movie. If you don't know, Nina Vardalis actually started off as sort of a one-woman comedy, not, not necessarily comedy, but like a one-woman show. And she talked about her life as a Greek woman and the struggles of, you know, all that sometimes your cultural identity can bring, especially when you meet someone that isn't part of that cultural identity. And so she did this one woman show and Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks actually saw it and approached her to do a movie about it. And that's sort of how it got made. I'm pretty sure it's Rita Wilson whose family is Greek. If you didn't know, it, I don't think it is Tom Hanks. I'm pretty sure it is Rita Wilson whose family is Greek. And that's sort of why they came together. And so if you've ever watched my Big Fat Greek Wedding and wondered why um, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson are producers on it, it's because they saw the show and wanted to make it into a movie because they loved Nina Vardalis' One Woman Show so much. So, um, like I said, Nina Verdales stars in the, as the female main character, and her name is Tula Portugales, and she is a 30-year-old woman. She works as a waitress slash seating hostess for her father, her, well, her family's restaurant, which is Dancing Zorba's, and she feels really stuck in her life. She's told by her father every day since she was 15 that she looks old, she should settle down, get married, have babies, etc., and that can happen a lot in cultures, especially if you're from Greek, Italian, even, you know, like Middle Eastern descent. It's just sort of a thing, you know, to get married and have kids, etc. And people feel that uh, pressure or whatever in any culture, really. So she feels like she's at this crossroads in her life and she decides she's going to change that. So she enrolls in um, college to study some more like computer science stuff to get out of her dad's restaurant to not be a waitress and to find sort of a new career path. And so we have one of the best makeover scenes in all of, I think, movie history because Tula's makeover isn't for a man. It isn't to impress someone. It isn't to get this job. She does her makeover for herself. She does, you know, she switches over to contacts she does like light everyday makeup. It's not something like she's coming out looking like a Jacqueline Hill 2016 full beat. She's got just lovely natural makeup. She gets clothes that fit her better. I don't even think there was like a weight loss thing. It's just she dressed in big baggy clothes and she dressed for her body type, you know, as a curvy tall woman. And another thing I really liked was that um, when she does her makeover, she embraces her naturally curly hair in the beginning was sort of stringy and flat and then she does her makeover and it's like she just figured out her curls instead of like flattering her hair or whatever so she found her beauty within her own um like face shape and everything like her hair texture she didn't morph into something or morph into like an idealistic um caucasian beauty standard which i really appreciated so she does this sort of makeover montage, it's not montage, but she, you know, she's in school, she's given herself a bit of a, a, a glow up, and she meets this guy, and they fall pretty quickly for one another. So he actually falls first, in my opinion, he falls in love with her first, because she is so scared that 
they won't be able to make it work. They're from different cultural backgrounds. He is not Greek. Her family is very, very Greek. And she's just worried it's just not going to work out. And she even tries to break it off with him. And he says, what's to work out? You know, we come from different families. Everyone has a different family. They have family dramas. Why does that have to break us apart? And so the two work at it. And um, there are some twists and turns along the way. But it's just such a wonderful romantic movie. I absolutely love it. John Corbett is our main, our male main character, who is Ian Miller. He is like a, a high school English teacher, and he's just so wonderful. He was just so wonderful as Aiden in Sex and the City, and he's just as charming and kind and generous as in this character as he is in a lot of his roles, and just wonderful. So Nina Vardalis and John Corbett are just such couple goals. They're just so wonderful. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this movie so much. And like I said, I watched it. I saw it in theater actually, like in 2002. And I recently rewatched it on HBO Max. And after 20 years, it's still just as wonderful as it was before. Um, let me know in the comments below. Have you seen this movie? Do you plan to watch it now? Let me know. Um, if you have any suggestions for future uh, rom-com movies that you think are canonical, let me know in the comments and I will add those to a list to do a future video for. Have a wonderful day and I'll see y'all soon. Bye everyone.